morning, Mayor. You are live on the air. Good morning. Good morning. I would like to welcome all the listeners from WFLT. This is a fine morning that God has blessed us with, and we are here today with a fantastic show giving good information. One of the things we get around good from good information is light and it's not darkness. And we're going to be moving into that, praying for those to make sure that we are a like mind, one flint, uh, no longer, you know, trying to rip our community apart uh, through the fi fiber of discourse. Uh, and so with today, today we have uh, Pastor Blake Strozier with us today uh, and to give us a prayer that we have a lot of good information. Get your pad and pencil. This is information that you can use uh, to move us in this community forward. Uh, but Pastor Strozier, good morning. Good morning to you, Mayor. Uh, again, to your listening audience and to all the Flintstones out there, a uh, great Saturday morning to you. As Mayor said, we're going to be praying for the unity of our community. Uh, I just believe that we've come too far to turn back now, that we have everything that we need to go forward as a city and as a community, and we just have to wrap our arms around each other, show love to each other, and be there to support each other. So right now, if you would pray with me, God, we come to you right now. First, we tell you thank you. To be so we could have been a funeral home last night, laid up in our hospital bed, but Father, you allowed us to be awoken this morning, clothed in our right mind, with a reasonable portion of life, health, and strength, and we tell you thank you. Father, you have brought us almost two years through this pandemic. We made dangerous toils and snares. We've already come. It wasn't it wasn't just the vaccine. It wasn't just being in the hospital. It was your grace and your mercy that saw us thus far. And we thank you right now for just being able to stand above the ground and the ground not to be on top of us. Father, I pray right now for this mayor, for those that will be speaking on this broadcast today. I pray that you will just continue to guide our city in, 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 into a new direction, to a new day. Father, we've tried it the old ways and we've tried it in the old mentality. But Father, we declare right now that we're going into a new season in this city, a new season of opportunity, a new season of blessing, a new season of, of, of our children our young people and our adults being well maintained. And Father, we pray for every resident in this city. We pray for North, South, East, and West. We pray for those that are on Broad Mill Street. We pray for those that are over by Scott. We pray for those that are over by Cleveland. We pray for those that are over by Northern. We pray for those wherever they may be, that we may continue to be the city that's a light shining on top of the hill. Father God, right now, we pray for unity because we know that in our world, there's so much tradition. We have Ukraine. We have Russia. We even have divisions in our own community, in our own county. But right now, Father, you said that you are not the God of confusion. So, Father, we pray right now that you will comfort and strengthen us right now. But as we continue to try to do what you called us to do, that you will continue to bless us and to keep us. And knowing you like we know you, we're not going to tell you thank you after the pandemic is over, after everything has returned back to the way it should be. But, Father, we pray right now that you will give us the directions and the desires of our hearts to claim victory in the name of Jesus. And we pray all this on your darling son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that powerful prayer, uh, Pastor Blake Schroeser, a uh, long, long time, uh, lifelong Flintstone uh, to return here to be able to give your gifts and talents as it has been given to you from our, our God uh, to be able to dispense uh, upon our people. And, and thank you so much. I know I interrupted your workout this morning. You're getting healthy today, right? Trying to, man, trying to. Well, that, that's a wonderful thing. It's all right, though. It, 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 it is definitely that, you know, definitely, you know, we talk about, you know, the level of, of churches and we talk about if society is the church's report card and we have 420 churches inside the city of Flint, 380 of those are African-American churches. What is the report card for our society and the level of unity? I can tell you now that we are doing a wonderful job in the city. Overall crime is down. Uh, but the level of uh, uh, homicides are up. But when you look at the data and we look at where we are, you know, uh, we are at the total of eight homicides for this year so far, but uh, four of those will be ruled justifiable homicides. And we have to look really deeply into the details of really trying to figure out what is on our community and not uh, misled by uh, different uh, levels of uh, interpretation of information. And so always on this broadcast, you will always get the real information, and we're doing a fantastic job. The priority for us over the last two years has been saving lives. I've been in office for 27 months, and we have been doing a fantastic job of doing the real thing of it, not staying divided. But if you all have been faithful listeners of WFLT, listening to the pre and post of this program, you have probably heard a lot of division and divisiveness. But we need to definitely come together because it is definitely one flint 
and there is a level of uh, peace and, and harmony. And I think it was Psalms uh, uh, 133 and 1, uh, behold how ple pleasant it is for us to dwell together in unity. But beyond that, let's get to our report about this, the deadly virus of COVID-19 and, and the two variants that's out there. Even though our numbers are going in the right direction, this deadly disease has claimed more than 900,000 lives. That is a reality. 900,000 American lives have failed victim to uh, this COVID virus. And it is, what this virus mostly does, it exploits all the weaknesses in our health. Uh, so you get this virus and it could, uh, if you have hypertension, if you have diabetes, if you have other ailments, uh, uh, this, this virus exploits those things in our body and then it causes us devastating harm, if not a fatal, uh, a fatal blow to our lives and our families. Dr. Furholden, where are we at with our numbers? Good morning, uh, Mayor, and to uh, the other guests and the listeners. We're doing very well. You know, we um, sort of, for, in our country, we are on the downside of of this uh, Omicron surge, and in other places, they're now hitting their peak. We've had some substantial decreases over the last five, six weeks. In Genesee County, we ended February 27th. We went from 222 cases down to 175. In Flint, we ended in February 7th. One little uptick. We went from 31 to 32 cases. That's not a significant difference. We basically are, you know, stably low rate of infection right now um, and spread in community. And so I just encourage people, you know, don't let that be the thing that has you kind of take your foot off the gas, right? When things are working, you keep working it. You know, it's like you put bread in the toaster, the toast pops out, but you unplug it from the wall, guess what? Bread's going to pop out. It ain't going to work. You got to stay plugged into the power source. And what has been our power in this pandemic? The power is that vaccine. And Dr. Reynolds will talk about that. He has a great way of talking about uh, why the vaccine is our foundation. But that means the vaccine, that means people masking indoors, especially if they're in densely populated places, continuing to get tested. Knowing your status is just so important. And ask everybody, everybody, if you have any because you don't have COVID. I always tell people the same way I don't want your COVID, I also don't want your flu or your cold or your anything. So if you are feeling well or if you have symptoms, you should be staying at home, not going out and spreading the germs. We want to spread love, not germs. So we're really good on the numbers and let's just stay the course. Well, that is definitely a thing uh, that we have to do, stay the course, because it's not an all green light. Uh, you know, uh, during this tenure of, of our, our engagement, you know, four months into my office, uh, we had the pandemic and this worldwide health crisis going on. Uh, the priority is life-saving measures, uh, and we've done a fantastic job of saving lives. And Dr. Furholden, I give you a lot of credit for the advice and the volunteerism that you have donated uh, to this community uh, as far as your advice and guidance. Closing the disparity gap, as we saw Black and Brown communities uh, be devastated because of this virus uh, that has uh, uh, ripped our country uh, down the middle of, of fear and paranoia and, and our health. Uh, when I remember when this virus first hit, I looked down the street to our sister city, Detroit, and watching the refrigeration trucks pull up because they didn't have enough room in the morgues because people uh, mainly of color what was perishing from this in higher proportions than any other pers persons. We declared a state of emergency here inside the city of Flint. And many said, why? Because we hadn't had the first case in Genesee County. I said, it's not a matter of if, it's when. And that's real leadership when we talk about making the hard decisions and making the movements to getting things done. Uh, as a byproduct of that, we were able to close the gap very early on with the disparity gap. And we were recognized uh, for our efforts here in the city of Flint uh, throughout the country on saying how did we close the gap. And Dr. Furholden, I give you a lot of credit because you and Dr. Reynolds uh, stepped right up and gave great advice to us as we made those changes uh, to make sure uh, that our per residency will be protected. So thank you for that, Dr. Furholden. Yes, thank you. Right. And Dr. Reynolds, you know, as we going into this and people are, are looking at uh, trying to restore uh, some level of normalcy, uh, we're looking at the, the reduction of the mask mandate across our state, uh, across our country. Uh, I still have a mask mandate inside of City Hall to protect uh, residents and the employees that come here to do business. Uh, but tell us, what should we be doing here? Because you were secured 
uh, with the with the idea to provide the best medical advice uh, that we uh, can get here inside the city of Flint. Well, thank you, Mayor. Uh, and speaking of masks, you have to understand that we still are dealing with layers of protection. Vaccination is the foundation for prevention of complications of infection. In other words, it reduces the risk of going into the hospital, going into the ICU, being intubated. Uh, it reduces that risk. <laughs> so we must be vaccinated. And, you know, right now, what breaks my heart is when I look at the vaccination rate amongst members of our community, we still aren't signing up and getting vaccinated completely. Uh, and, and now is the time. You know, we came down from the wave and, and we're in the bottom. And this is the time to act to protect ourselves for the next wave and that gets vaccinated. Then the next issue is masking. Uh, local governments and organizations can make their own masking requirements. But we as individuals have to use our heads. We have to look at what's going on in our household and in our neighborhood and in our, in our community. If you have a senior, and I'm a senior, I'm talking about people over 60 in your household that increase this hospitalization and deaths from COVID. If you have someone who's getting cancer treatment, someone who's pregnant, thinking about pregnant, uh, you need to protect them. And that's why vaccination and masking around people you don't know so you don't bring the infection home is so important. Uh, if you have someone who's getting cancer treatments, you need to mask up in order to protect them. And then we have children under five. Everybody says they don't get as sick, but you don't want your house to be the house where someone really got seriously ill because we decided to go out in the general public without a mask and then come home and give that to our loved ones or our coworkers. So masking is still important. It's easy to do. It won't kill you. When you go to a setting, a public setting, indoor, grocery shopping, come to city hall, go to the library, come to school, you know, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Remember, your mother used to say, just because you see your friends jump off a bridge, are you going to jump off after them? Well, the decision not to mask is jumping off the bridge just because you saw people who say they're your friends do so. Have I been clear, Mayor? You are. you being very clear. That means that we will continue to, uh, for, uh, to uh, be very cautious about where we are with our numbers. And so, therefore, uh, the mask mandate will continue on until further notice inside of City Hall uh, until we continue to make sure that the numbers are going in the right direction. We don't and cannot afford another super spreader or any more lives to be lost uh, through this deadly virus. And I have a responsibility and a duty to protect uh, the employees of the city of uh, Flint, uh, as well as residents that come here to do their business. And so we will do so, um, uh, making sure until green light comes or till we get to herd immunity uh, to where we can make sure that <clears throat> we are doing the right thing. But this is a time of year and many wonder how municipalities are funded. The financial structures of a municipality is very complex. It's unlike any other structure. One of the things that we know that we have is a, a dedicated forced revenue stream from the public and that it's a dedicated revenue stream because it's a tax base and it's forced because you got to pay your taxes. Uh, we all have to pay taxes, whether it's property tax, sales tax, but taxes is the way primarily municipalities and school districts are funded. In the city of Flint, don't be uh, fooled at all. We have a structural deficit. We've been in trouble for many, many years. You have not heard anyone candidly tell you that from the seat and position that I am in because they sell false hope. False hope is much like any other narcotic. It can hurt you and harm you. We have a structural deficit uh, because of, of, of loss of business and loss of business growth through many different things. And primarily when General Motors started its exit from uh, the city of Flint, we lost a lot of tax base, a lot of good paying, high paying jobs. We lost those things and we never really made the, the corrective measures to change it. That's why you saw 
uh, the visitation of emergency managements. And even through that, the emergency managers did not do us well. And then when we, you had people sitting in the seat of mayor thinking more of their style of being VIPs rather than servants, we get we continue down this course. Now we have $94.7 million and I provided the guarantee that these dollars will be accounted for and you will be able to recognize where they hit. You will also have the opportunity to have your input. <clears throat> we have one more input session to, put, to provide a level of structure and understanding how these dollars are to be regulated and follow the rule set, which was provided by the federal government, 430 pages. And if you don't follow the rules, we know penalties will be immense on us. So uh, that is March 8th, and we will be over at the Insight Building on South Saginaw Street. We had our, our session uh, this past week, and we've had one every, uh, every week for the last three weeks, our last one. Now, you still can weigh in going to the City of Flint website. It's a survey there as we've been collecting data. We have our buckets, but we're, we're adding more, uh, trying to make sure that we do the right things and making sure that every dollar is accounted for. And uh, we have seen that many times that we, uh, over the past years, uh, much, much money has come through this community and we have not recognized uh, the value of those dollars because it was hard and it was very elusive to where we could see those dollars being impacted and have very lightly uh, engagement with input for that. But this administration is making sure that that won't happen. But going back to our primary way that we finance the city of Flint is through our property taxes. And we have our city assessor on the line with us, Stacy Cakes. Uh, she's been sending out notices telling you what your property tax obligations are to this community. The city is, is uh, uh, dependent upon those tax dollars as well as the school district. Now, your your assessments are there, and Stacy, she's going to tell and explain to you what you've been receiving in the mail and how you can have engagement. Stacy, good morning. Good morning. So everybody should have re received their uh, change notes that we send out yearly around the last weekend in February. If they have not, they can um, come to our office and get a copy of it. Um, basically, this our department is governed by state law. So these act this information actually applies throughout the whole state. Um, this is one department where locally there's not much control because we do have to follow state law. So with this assessment change, what we're stating in these is basically what your assessment was last year and what it is tentatively for 2022. And it also says the increase. years of me tax will be going up three hundred forty nine dollars while his assessment only went up a hundred. Now the key thing that people want to really pay attention to is about a third away down the sheet it says what your taxes are going to be increased and yours is going to be increased eighteen dollars. Mm -hmm. Another important section on this is underneath the principal residency exemption. If you own and occupy your home you want to make sure that says a hundred percent. If it does not you're paying more in taxes than you should be. So you need to come into our office and fill out a form. And we can actually um, go back up to three years on that. Right, now Stacey, um, hold, hold on a second. But, oh, oh, what, uh, Deborah, uh, can you put up the slide so, it, so, the, so the screen yard audience can see what she's talking about? Uh, when we're looking at our tax bills and we're talking about our assessed values and our SEV values. Um, and so go ahead, Stacey, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I want to just put up the slide so people can actually see what that is. Uh, go ahead. Yep. Okay. And I did, excuse me, and <clears throat> the important areas are highlighted as well that you really want to look at um, that actually will affect you and your budgets. Um, right. The next thing that you want to look at is underneath the March Board of Review appeal information that has the dates and times for the Board of Review. Um, so if you disagree with your assessment, that's what you want. You want to call and make an appointment with us. And um, those dates are March 14th from 11 to 4. And then Tuesday, March 15th from 3 to 9. And then again on March 17th from, I believe it's 9 to 1. So you definitely want to call and make an appointment. Um, if, or if you have any questions regarding this, um, give our department a call. We'll gladly answer any questions you have and kind of walk it through. Now, if people feel that their assessed value is too high due to the condition of their home, 
say there's some type of um, extreme deterioration if you have a house where, you know, there's mold um, and other things going on with it. They call a department. We will gladly go out on it right now and um, review that value as well um, to save them a trip into the board of review. Um, another thing that's really important to pay attention to if anybody has purchased their home within the last year, they want to pay attention to that increase in taxable value. Because if they are in escrow, what happens is the escrow company is only required to look at what the previous homeowner paid in taxes um, to set up that escrow account. Now, with the way property values have been going, they've been increasing significantly if anybody has gone to look at house prices lately. So that could be a significant increase taxes. So what works with the escrow companies is they'll use, you know, the previous year in order to set up that escrow. And then for 2022, your property becomes what's called untapped. And the SCB and the tax will become one and the same. Because if you look at your taxable, you have a difference um, of your taxable value right now is 10, 9, 29, where um, your assessed is 11, 4. Now, say you had purchased your house last year, Mayor, you would actually see your taxable value be at that 11,400. So there would be a, um, a larger increase. So those that are seeing that large increase, I really highly recommend they contact their escrow company to see if they can adjust the escrow payment because they'll collect what was paid by the previous owner for a year. And that and what will happen is your escrow count will be short next year. So they have to um, think, uh, collect that, Labor was short plus that increase. And that can really drive some of these house payments up significantly to a few hundred dollars. Right now, and Stacey, that could really... Yeah, yeah, yeah Stacy, we, 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 we have a lot of information here. And I, even myself, you know, as I looked at my... my, <laughs> my, 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 my uh, my taxable value for my home and trying to look at how what and how much and what was my obligation and looking at the formula. I want to first give out that number again. It's 766 7255 766 7255 if you have questions about your assessment. Now the good news Absolutely. is it, the good news is this is that if your if your taxable value has went up for your home, meaning that your home was valued at more and our taxable our, our values of our property are going up inside the city of Flint. Is that true, Stacy? Yes, absolutely. Um, some areas are more significant than others. Right. And so now also, you know, money is, is, is at a, a high premium. You know, we can't afford all these things and all these obligations that we have. And we want to see. You know, appropriate basis. Now, one of the ways that you can uh, probably cut down on, on your obligation or, or save some dollars is that if you at one point in time, like myself, uh, I bought the vacant lot. Uh, behind my home uh, to extend my yard because it was it was a burned down structure there. It was cleared and I bought it many years ago. And so I had two city lots. And so now under the emergency management in the previous administration, assessments were uh, given to property, a garbage assessment and also a streetlight assessment. That's outside of your regular property tax uh, taxable uh, obligation. Uh, a garbage assessment, as well as streetlight assessments. Okay. So now if, because I had two city lots, I was assessed uh, on two city lots and Stacy, I was only assessed uh, for the garbage assessment and or the light assessment on the additional lot or both. Oh, I'm only the lighting assessment. You're only charged the garbage assessment if there's um, a home on the property. Right. So vacant lots, you are charged a light, a streetlight assessment. Okay. Now, if you go through the process of, of paying a $50 fee, and correct me if it's not $50, Stacey, uh, a $50 fee to combine those lot, the lot that you may have, the side lot or a back lot to your property, but it has to be adjacent to your to your primary property, uh, your homesteaded property, uh, and then you can relieve the assessment for the streetlight assessments, saving you a few dollars. Is that correct, Stacey? Um, yes, that is, but also because I know people have bought um, properties within their their block area, and if they have subcontiguous properties there, those can be combined together as well. Right, and it doesn't have to, and it doesn't affect their home. 
Right. So meaning if you have uh, blocks, uh, well, property lots, not uh, contiguous to your primary property leader, contiguous to one another. If you have two lots uh, um, in another part of your neighborhood that's side by side, you can combine those lots to save yourself the assessment. But these are ways that we can save uh, money by providing information. That is what the real uh, uh, thing of, 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 of elected officials, we're supposed to be giving you information how to enhance the quality of your life, uh, not to cause more strife, but these are the informational pieces. And once again, I wanna give that number, put the number up again for me uh, so we can see the numbers. The number is 766, uh, what is that number, Stacy? 766? Um. 7255. 7255. And so this is ways uh, that we can uh, understand and better understand our taxable value for our property. What are the measurements uh, to be able to, if you don't agree with the assessed value of your home, you have the level of a border review that you can come and have a dialogue with them. Uh, to uh, improve, listen to you. Uh, we'll go ahead and tell about the process, Stacey. Okay, so for the board of review, you want to call and make an appointment, and we'll go through things that you want to bring in. Um, you want to bring in sales of the area, showing what they're going for and what you to reflect on what you feel the value is. Um, we actually have sales book in our offices, and that we'll make copies of those sales areas for them if, to bring in. Um, and the board of review is separate from us, but they do have rules they follow. The one big rule is if somebody doesn't bring in any evidence, they cannot approve any changes. Right. And I just want to give a, a, a big shout out to you, Stacey, and your team and your staff for doing great work. Uh, remember uh, to get in, to have a dialogue, give a call if you need more information on better how to understand your taxable value for your home. Uh, that is uh, important. A couple of announcements. March 19th is uh, State Representative Cynthia Neely's and I uh, next celebrating mother. We'll be celebrating mothers at the Flint Development Center, formerly the Bunch Elementary School. Uh, we'll be uh, uh, loving on mothers uh, in, in recognition of the loss of our mothers. And that is going to be March 19th at the Flint Development Center. And we'll be starting at uh, 1030 uh, that morning. You can call 810-458-3936. Uh, 810-458-3936. 3936 if you want to be a part of celebrating mothers this is us recognizing mothers uh, on that day celebrating you we'll be treating you to breakfast also the plan the, the draft plan of the St. John's neighborhood uh, is, is ready for your review uh, I want to thank James Wardlow uh, of, of the committee uh, and the whole committee helping us put this together a big north side investment uh, St. John's neighborhood, which was deconstructed back in 1973. We are now putting resources into play to make sure that we get uh, uh, the better uh, out of the, the dollars that we're receiving through uh, marijuana dollars and different things, reinvestment into our North Side community. This is a very big, robust plan on how to change, we change, change this back into public occupation and use again. That has been a plan of things we've been working on. Also, at the end of this month, scheduled for March 28th, if no delays, uh, we will be unveiling the Floyd J. McCree statue in front of City Hall, uh, the first African-American mayor elected in 1966, the first African-American mayor elected to a major metropolitan city, which was Flint, Michigan. Open housing occurred uh, as a byproduct of him being there, and many people like myself uh, followed the example that he gave, meaningful examples, and it will be the first African-American statue displayed inside the city of Flint uh, for his great works. And that is something that we have done here uh, while we've been here in our tenure, along with other things that we have done. And we, we would love to put out, uh, we're going to be um, displaying all the great works that we've been doing. Uh, it's, it's more than just a, a platform or a stage, but it's actually about real work, but nothing more than uh, more than saving lives, which has been the number one priority as America has been uh, stacked with layers of frustration through a pandemic, a health crisis, a water crisis. Uh, we're moving forward and we're doing a great work uh, that is real. And so I want to thank the WFLT listeners for listening. Uh, I love you, mom. I always say uh, that at the end of every show, even though I lost her this past year, I still love her. Uh, she's in my heart and mind. And I thank you all for joining us and thank our listening audience and thank our guests. Thank you all. God bless you.